Um, it's strong. <laughs> Sally YouTube, today's video is pretty cool. We are actually in the 9th arrondissement of Paris and I'm about to go to the Secret Wine Door which is a brand new concept place which has popped up in Paris and it's a all around wine and cheese tasting. We're going to be tasting cheese from all around France and we're going to meet the founder as well. Wine Door with, I guess, the founder, the founder of Secret Wine Door, a specialist of wine, cheese, and experiential moments and French connaissance. French connaissance. <laughs> connaissance. We're going to do a bit of a challenge today where you're going to get me to try a variety of French cheeses from different regions around France, and you guys are going to be able to learn about the cheese at the same time. Sound good? It's going to be fun. <laughs> so, tell us about you. Who are you? What's the concept behind the Secret Wine Door? Yeah, so. Hi guys, my name is Erwin, I'm French, born in Paris, and the founder of Secret Wine Door, which is where we are now. Yeah. Uh, the idea is that uh, I do experience in Paris here and uh, share my knowledge on wine, about the wine regions, and talk about the different uh, wines that, that we try, and also try to give some anecdotes, tips, like how to buy your wine from a supermarket, mm -hmm. also how to taste wine, the tasting of the aromas, of mm -hmm. the flavors, and yeah, the idea is to create kind of an intimate uh, experience. I want to get out of the classroom approach that most of the tasting have. Sometimes when you go to these kinds of things, it feels like they, they know everything and they're the professor mm. and you know nothing and you're the nervous little student. So that's exactly yeah. what I don't want. Yeah. For me, the idea is no more than 10 people and we have a normal conversation. I share my knowledge, but also they can ask me questions. And yeah. Like basic questions, it, it's totally fine and it's... Uh, it lasts around two hours and uh, the idea is that my guests in the end live as wine experts and they're satisfi satisfied with secret wine door. Oh, that sounds awesome, Ace, but it's really cozy and you've done a really beautiful job with the decoration and everything. So, Thank you. And, and people, if they want to come here, they have to reserve online, right? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly that's the concept. I didn't give put any sign outside. The idea for me is I don't want anybody to knock on the door being curious what's going on. So yeah. people have to reserve online and there is a certain spots, but they can also contact me for private events. And wow, cool. Kind of thing. That's, what, that's the approach I want to have. Great. Yeah. So we'll leave all the links down below, guys, so that you can find the website, Instagram, all the socials and everything like that. So what are we going to get started with? you got six cheeses. <laughs> I don't know if you want me to tell you, or maybe you try, you tell me the one. What do you think it is? Yeah. And then I give you a bit of story. Maybe you can try start with that one. The one in the I middle. Want, yeah, I want okay. to go from mildest to maybe strongest. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that you don't suffer from the beginning. <laughs> and then yeah. Okay. Cool. You could show us also how to cut the cheese because I know there's a lot of faux pas yeah. around cheese in France. You can show us how it's done. So when you have the cheese, what you want is to to have parts from the inside of the cheese to go from the outside. So for example, we're gonna start with that one. Yeah. So what you can do is do half of that one mm -hmm. and you have every part of, it, of that cheese. The idea is to have all of the flavors because it goes it goes maturing from inside out. So ah, okay, okay. Gotcha. So that's what you want to do. You're gonna hate me, but I never know the difference between like camembert, brie, like anything like that. Uh, so I know it's that. one of the two. I can give you a hint already. It's one of the okay. two. Okay. Um, camembert? No. <laughs> I should have known when you said it's yeah. with the mildest. Yeah. Yeah. This one is a brie de Maux, Okay. Which is coming from uh, actually very, near, very nearby Paris, Saint Emile, which is on the east side of Paris. Mm -hmm. And we call it the king of the cheeses. The reason for that is mm -hmm. that around 1800, uh, Europe was a bit destroyed and all the different leaders from different countries of, uh, of Europe all gathered in Vienna for a summit and they, it was long and boring conversations. So I want, they decided that in order to make it nicer, yeah. they will just make a contest of the cheese and have one cheese of different country. And the one which has been decided to be the best cheese is the brie and they call it the king of the surprise, cheese. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> um, it surprises me that you say it's the mildest because it's still smells. Yeah. I mean, there's still a light smell to it. I'm not sure. Do you like it? Mmm, yeah. I do, yeah. I always have to differentiate between the smell and the taste. But then when you taste it, it's creamy and yeah, it doesn't it doesn't have a strong taste. No. Just, uh, not really. Yeah. This one passes the test. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Let's see about the second one if you're... So this is the camembert. This is the camembert. Okay. 
What's the difference between a brie and a camembert? So it's both made with cow milk. Mm -hmm. But I would say the, the camembert is creamier. So mm -hmm. first it's smaller, right? It's, uh, it's creamier and uh, yeah, it's stronger. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <You can laughs> yeah, this this is a next level for but me. But next yeah. level, yeah. Camembert is not for everyone, I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah the smell is really part of the experience. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. And where is this particular camembert from? This one it comes from Normandy, oh. which is actually the, uh, it's the, the land of camembert. And it is, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the land of camembert. Yeah. Okay. And um, yeah, the, the camembert, you, when you go to the store, there is one thing that for sure you, you if you see a wooden box, mm -hmm. it's really because it's a camembert. It's part of the experience of the camembert. Basically, for transportation in the past, in, in order to transport the camembert, since it's a bit creamier than the brie, it, for the transportation, it would, by the time it arrived at the final destination, it would probably be or, uh, in the wrong shape. Yeah. So what they did, they created that wooden box to facilitate the transportation, first within France and mm -hmm. then uh, external in other countries. And now it's like the symbol. Yeah, of now it's the symbol. Of and actually some people are just so fascinated about it. And like the collect that collectors Yes, items. there is collectors and thousands in there. Yeah. <laughs> why not? Right? And so, so for me, personally, this is probably, this is coming towards my limit, just because I'm not used to it. For us, we just grow with it. Mm. Since we're a young age, we just use up, when you open the fridge, you have the huge smell of camembert. And you're just used to it. Yeah. And you're used to it. So. But do you know the best, I, I would say, an entry level to camembert? like oven baked mm -hmm. and, oh, then, yeah. and then it has less smell and yeah. but it's all like crusty yeah. and like baked on the outside and it's melted and you have it's amazing yeah, yeah. oh you like it like yeah that. i oh, love okay. it i love it like that further one mm -hmm. that i want to make you try would be this one. Oh my gosh i've been looking at this one uh -huh. okay i have to <laughs> tell us about yeah. this one so as you see there is two things that you notice which is so this one is a shell Goat. Goat cheese, indeed, and there's two things that you notice, which is the black layer around it yes. and the straw inside. So this black layer is actually ash, uh, wood ash. Okay. Yeah. So historically they used that wood ash to put it on the cheese so that the insects, they don't go and start oh, eating the cheese and they're okay. quite re repelled, okay? Yeah. yeah. Also that all the cheese don't stick together. Cheese is quite sticky and the fact, the fact of putting that ash, mm. it, they're not going to stick together. And it also adds a saltiness to the... To the, to the cheese, which is why actually we keep it also nowadays. It's Saint-Maur de Touraine, so this one is a type of shell. It's a long cheese, yeah. and they do put a straw inside. So, so whatever it comes as a roll, yeah, and a then roll. you would cut it into slices. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm a bit anxious about this black, but... <laughs> Go ahead, we're used to it. Nothing's gonna happen to you. Same smell as scent is mm. better, I guess, if you're used to eating better. So this one comes from Roi Mm -hmm. Which is on the west of Paris, kind of. Okay. And it's a, it's a long region. I think I've talked about that quite a lot on my channel, which is that France is France, but then each region has their own heritage, tradition, cheese, wine, and there's like, I mean, and there's the real uh, sense of pr let you protect that. Yeah, yeah, that's, we're very proud. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and so you should be. This is yeah. delicious. Yeah. <laughs> I really like this, and I can definitely taste the saltiness. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's subtle, but it yeah. is there. We could have started also with that one. I mean, it's, it's not a very strong, but yeah. it's, a, it's a different type of milk, right? Most but of the cheese, when you see them in the market, I don't want to try it. I no. don't want to see it. And actually, the uglier city is the better. Okay. <laughs> so that is a good takeaway. <laughs> the uglier, the better. Okay, what's next? So the next one, we can try that one. I think Comte? The, yeah. Oh, yeah. my favorite. Yeah. This one is, uh, I mean, it, it's... It's easy, I would say, for yeah. foreigners because it's it's a hard cheese, firstly, yeah, which yeah. feels safer. It feels like cheddar. It feels yeah, like, you know. Yeah. Um, so the Comté, it's uh, it matures for four months. Some of them mature for more than thirty-six months. Wow. And what's going to develop is basically the aromas. So in that case, this one is eighteen months, and it's going to develop certain aromas which you're not going to feel if you would have matured it for four months. Okay. Yeah. Mm. This is the favorite of uh, of the French people. This is one of the most favorite uh, French cheese. Yeah, and Comté is from Comté. Franche Comté, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's from the Jura region. Yeah, and it's from Franche Comté, exactly. Mm. 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 Would this be an entry level for French children, for example, or would they would they just go straight into it? Yeah, I think you just go straight into it. <laughs> for us, you just try <laughs> since you're a young kid. Yeah. There is all the cheese on the table, and you just serve a piece of each. Definitely. You just definitely. grow up with it. Yeah. With the Wow, that's amazing. Maybe we can go for the oh, this one. Okay, <laughs> sure. Well, I, just, I said that, but this no. one. <laughs> this I won't be able to guess it. For me, this one is yeah. a, it's the 
Again, it looks to me like a bread, like a camembert. It's creamy on the inside. It's got a white layer outside. Mm. I'm really not an expert at all. So tell us about this one. This one is a uh, Roblochon. Ah, yeah. okay. So it's the one we use for the tartiflette, for example, type of meal. I don't know if you ever tried tartiflette. I have. It's usually a meal that we eat more during winter. And it's, uh, it's quite a heavy. Quite it's heavy. Quite heavy. <laughs> it's potatoes, a lot of cheese. Lardon. Uh, lardon yeah. Onions, sometimes. Onions, yeah, yeah. exactly. And it's good. And the roblochon is called actually roblochon because it comes from the, from the word roblochon. Okay. Which literally means milk the cows utter, uh, utter <laughs> again. Okay. Milk the cows utter again, which uh, this is because in the past the milk farmers they used to be taxed on how much milk they would produce. Right. So after a while they were like, well, actually, what I'm going to do is half milk my cow, mm -hmm. uh, uh, pay my tax, and once the tax is paid, I'm going to milk again my cow and use that, uh, use that milk to produce the roblochon. Right, so, okay. Some of these things I'm like, oh, it looks a bit too strong, it smells a little bit, it looks like it's going to be really intense, I'm not going to like it. And if you judge it before trying, I mean, you're never going to... You're never going to try it. You're never going to get out of that comfort zone. Yeah. And they're actually a lot tastier and milder than I would have ever expected. Yeah. Shall we? <laughs> well, the last one. The one you might suffer the most. But... Yeah. But it's actually very good for us. You know, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and cheese. take my own advice, which was don't judge the cheese by its looks or by its smells. Oh. And, uh, yeah, one of the characteristics of that one is uh, so it's blue cheese. So it's it's actually mixed in during the production with uh, with a fungus with a mushroom, right? So during the production, they mix it with the with the mushroom, the fungus, and. Uh, and then once it's done, the cheese is done, they pinch the cheese with some needles, basically, okay. to let the air in. So that's why there is plenty of holes, right. so that there is some air which goes inside, and with the air, it's going to create, the fungus is going to start creating in those spaces. Oh, and during okay. eight weeks, it matures in, exactly. And there, there, there is a legend, what well, I'll let you try first, and okay. tell you more. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, it's a blue cheese, and we won't even <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, not as bad as you imagine. <laughs> um, it's strong. <laughs> it's strong in this. Should I bring some more? No, it's fine. It's, it's, it's got a saltiness to it, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. It's Definitely. like very yeah. salty. It's um, very salty, yeah. And honestly, it tastes like... I, I feel like I'm not tasting the cheese. I feel like all I taste is the mold. So there's a meat. Mm. Doesn't know if it's true, but there is a, a young boy which was one day in the cave. He was eating his little sandwich, so mm. a piece of bread with some cheese, and he saw a beautiful woman from outside of the cave. So he, he <laughs> left running out of the cave to to see that woman. Mm. He just forgot about his cheese there. And when he came back to the cave three or four months later, I think something like that, he saw his cheese was well with plenty of mold. Mm. He ate it. It actually wasn't bad. So this is why it started, and people were like, maybe we should explore this. Uh, this way of eating the cheese. This one, this one for example, is, since it's very salty, as you say, you take a, a sweet wine, a very sweet wine paired with this one, it's yeah. just going to be incredible in your mouth. Yeah. Okay. Just as an advice. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, if any of you guys are based in Paris or are planning on visiting Paris in the near future, definitely think about checking out this place. You'll have Owen here waiting yeah. for you. Always a pleasure to have you in this <laughs> Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video Wednesday. A bientôt. A bientôt. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.